So we're going to take a look at a matrix vector product denoted AX. In this video, we'll do a couple of these computations to get a feel for what do we mean by computing the quantity AX. So this A is a matrix, so in general A is a matrix, and X is a vector. And we're going to kind of review slash learn the rules for how you do this product. So in the first example here, part A, let's just let A be this matrix, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we'll choose x to be the vector 2, 0, negative 1, and we're going to compute the quantity A times x. So if I write out what that means, that means take A and multiply it by x. One of the first things we need to do is ask ourselves, is this quantity AX even well defined? So the way you, that you can check that is by looking at the dimensions of the matrix and the dimensions of the vector. So if we look at the matrix A, we see that A has three rows and three columns, so this is what we call a 3 by 3 matrix. Similarly, if we look at the vector X and look at its dimensions, it has three rows and one column, so this is a 3 by 1 vector. For the quantity AX to be defined, these interior dimensions three there on the left and three on the right, those need to match. Those always have to match. So anytime you do a multiplication of a matrix times a vector or a vector times a matrix or a matrix times a matrix or a vector times a vector, the interior dimensions here, these right here, these have to match. So in this case, the number of columns in A equals the number of rows in X. Both of those are equal to three. So that tells us that this quantity is properly defined. So we can actually compute what AX is. Also, when we're done, these outer dimensions, the 3 here and the 1 here, tell us what the final quantity is going to be in terms of its size or dimension. So we'll get to that here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. So what we do is we let each element of X multiply each column of A. So I'm going to have the first element of X is 2. I'm going to multiply that by the first column of A, which is 1, 4, 7. Then I'm going to add 0, because that's the second element of X, times this second column of A, plus a negative 1 times the final column of A. So every element of X goes here, multiplying every column of A. So that's how we define this matrix vector product. From here it's pretty easy, because we've already reviewed how to take a scalar times a vector. So we just have to do that three times. Two times this first vector gives us 2, 8, 14. Zero times this other vector gives us all zeros, and a negative one times the final column vector gives us the same column vector, just with negatives everywhere. Now I just need to add up three vectors. Well, that's easy. Two plus a negative three is a negative one. Eight plus a negative six is two, and 14 plus a negative nine is five. So we've computed the matrix vector product AX for this example, and note our final answer here is a 3 by 1 vector. It has three rows and one column, which is exactly what we had over here as our outer dimensions, 3 times 1. So the outer dimensions tell us the final size that we'll obtain when we're done with the multiplication. Let's do another example. So in part B, we're going to choose a different A. We'll choose a different X. And again, we're going to try to compute the quantity AX. So I write down A, I write down X, and the first thing I need to do is check and make sure that this is a well-defined quantity. So I look at the matrix A. It's a 2 by 2 matrix. It has two rows, two columns. And I look at the vector X, and it has three rows and one column. And I look here, and I look at the inner dimensions. The number of columns of A is 2. The number of rows of X is 3. 2 is not equal to 3. So I cannot do this matrix vector multiplication. AX in this case is undefined. So if somebody asks you to compute this quantity AX for this particular A and X, there is no answer. It's undefined. We can't do this multiplication because the number of columns of A doesn't match the number of rows of X, and it has to for us to be able to do this operation. Let's look at one final example. Here are the matrix A is negative 7, 5, 0, 0, 4, 3. X is still a length 3 vector, 3, 5, 7. We're going to compute A times X. I write down A, I write down X, and I check the dimensions first of all. In this case, A has two rows and three columns. 
and x has three rows and one columns. So if I look at the inner dimensions there, they match. So we know that we can compute this quantity. The way I do it is just the same. I let each element of x multiply each column of a. So I'm going to get 3 times a negative 7 times 0, plus 5 times the second column, plus 7 times the third column. I can go ahead and multiply these scalars times vectors. I'll get a negative 21, 0. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 4 is 20. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 3 is 21. So now I have these three vectors. I can add all three vectors up, and I get 4 and 41. This final answer has two rows and one column, which is exactly what we should have gotten according to the purple um, writing here. The outer dimensions were two and one, so we need to end up with a two by one answer, and that's exactly what we ended up with. So there's a handful of examples of how to compute the quantity a times x. You have to make sure that the interior dimensions match to make sure that the product ax is actually defined. Once you know that it is defined, AX is easy to compute because you just let each column of A get multiplied by each element of X.